Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well during these crazy times. I know we are on a stay-at-home order now. I know a lot of you probably already are, but because of this, I decided to... I haven't posted in a couple weeks, so I'm going to start giving you guys the uh, Sasquatch series. I'm going to start doing these videos like two to three times a week. That way, my subscribers have something to watch from me. So I hope you enjoy. Um, I know it's been a minute since I've uploaded, so I do apologize for that. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. That way you get all the new uploads that I post. Today's story is out of Coshocton County, Coshocton, Ohio. This one hits close to home. It's, it took place in Woodbury Wildlife Area. Now, what's interesting about this area is it was forested and mined in the 1800s. All the way up to about the mid 1900s and they had to replenish or replace a lot of the resources they had taken from this area they planted a lot of trees uh, mainly they did that part in the late 1800s and they actually dug about 150 ponds and a lot of them are spring fed and it's great fishing now if you guys get a chance because of the lockdown and the weather's super nice Get out there and do some mushroom hunting. They're popping up here, so you might have a good opportunity to find some. And look for Bigfoot. You have a better chance of finding Bigfoot than toilet paper. With all that being said, I hope you guys do enjoy this video. One more thing I might add. I just now noticed, looking at the map, that this is actually very close to the uh, Salt Fort um, Wildlife Area, which is where a very recent... Um, you know, story of Bigfoot took place in Ohio where guys caught uh, some pictures on their GoPros and on a trail, trail camera. It's a very controversial video. A lot of people think it's fake. A lot of people think it's real. So this seems to be a hot spot. So hope you guys do enjoy. Sit back, relax, and let's get going. It was July. It was a hot morning around 4.23 a.m., I left my house for an hour and a half drive to Coshocton County, Ohio. I was headed down mainly to check on our house and property we inherited after Grandpa had passed. We had some tenants that moved out recently, and I came to mow and check for maintenance. Now, Grandfather's house sat on a mile-long gravel road, and it was right next to Woodbury Wildlife Area. I was going to fish the various mini ponds that nobody hardly ever fished. These ponds that I was headed to were full of giant smallies and crappies and massive catfish, snapping turtles the size of spare car tires. It was truly an amazing place to fish, beautiful wilderness, just an amazing place to grow up. Grandpa fished it all the way up to age 86 years old till he couldn't do it anymore. I believe he lived there just for the fishing. Once he couldn't go anymore, he passed away just six months later. He was a jokester, but there was a couple stories he would always tell me that I wasn't sure to believe or not. When Grandpa was in the Navy during World War II, he said one year on Christmas Eve, they took a big Christmas ham, put it on a massive hook and chain, and caught a 12-foot great white shark. He said it was pretty common for them to catch 12 to 15 foot hammerhead sharks and they would get four to six at a time as hammerheads often swam in schools the second story he used to tell me was a bigfoot story and this encounter it happened in the early 80s actually at woodbury wildlife area at one of the secret ponds we'd go to the grandpa referred to as reefer lake now this encounter took place actually in Woodbury Wildlife Area in the early 1980s, and a pond Grandpa always referred to as Reefer Lake. It was down a well-beaten path in the middle of nowhere. There's a giant beaver dam and hut still there to this day that has actually been there most of my life. On this particular day, Grandpa was bobber fishing with massive creek chubs, trying to catch the big bass that reside in this pond. He was coasting along and enjoying the day when he started to hear splashing near Beaver Dam, and he was headed around the corner to check out the commotion, and he thought very well that he was going to see one of the large beaver that lived in the pond. He was wrong. He said he couldn't believe his eyes. It looked like a man in a gorilla suit 
that was chest deep in the water, facing the bank. And there was flies around its head, and he thinks that's why it was actually in the pond, was to get the horse and deer flies off of it, which were extremely bad that year. Now he said when it turned and saw him, he said it, he couldn't believe how much its face looked like a man. And as soon as it did notice Grandpa, it bolted out of the water into the thick brush. And he told me that it was massive, probably six foot seven to seven foot tall. Grandpa swore on these stories till the day he died. And even though he's a jokester, I truly believe that's what he saw. Even though myself, I had a hard time believing in Bigfoot, as I had never seen one. And I always thought it was just a myth. And I was wrong too. Once I had finished mowing for the day, checked the house and got my stuff set in and headed out to do some well-deserved night fishing. It was about 5.30 in the evening and I was headed to one of the best ponds that I knew to go to and I was going to try to land a couple nice smallies and maybe some crappie for dinner. As I turned on the county road 286, I had no idea that my perception of things was about to change forever. This old road was a gravel road and it was windy, full of woods and tall brush on the sides of the road. As it came around the bend, I noticed something large and black kneeling on the side of the road just outside of the tall grass. The first thing I saw was a long extended hairy arm and what appeared to be roots of some kind in its hand. When I say it was kneeling, it was actually on all fours in a stance much like a gorilla would do with his shoulders out. As it looked up at me, I knew I was staring at a Bigfoot. What happened next is what really blew my mind the most. It bared its teeth as it peered at me and shook its head a little bit like a chimpanzee or great ape would do. This freaked me out, and I hit the door lock. As soon as it made that sound, it turned, went crashing through the brush and trees, and made a whoop sound. It terrified me. I actually left that night and left all my stuff down at the house. I didn't even get a chance to fish. My name is Gary Wallace Jr., and that's my Bigfoot story. Thank you. Thanks for listening, everybody, and I'd like to thank Gary for sharing his story. If you have an encounter of your own, please leave a comment down below, and I will get back with you. Please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get any of the stories that I may upload. Thanks, everybody, and stay safe out there. See you tomorrow.